It is a wet and stormy day here at Alcoholic Towers. It's deep into December. It's grey. It's windy. I don't know if you can hear the wind whistling behind me. It's about a gale force eight out there. But a brilliant day to stop and reminisce about what an absolutely brilliant year it's been, especially for getting videos. The whole COVID nonsense seems to be finally, fingers crossed, behind us. Travels opened up and we have really gone for it this year. We've been all over the place. We've been out to the Palmer Boat Show. We've been to Cannes Boat Show, Monaco Boat Show, Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, which was just brilliant. They were all brilliant. Plus some shows in the UK, Southampton, of course, and one or two others, uh, and various uh, brokerages and um, boat dealers and boat manufacturers and so forth. It's been a full on year and it's just been brilliant. And I think, I hope, that the standard of boats that you've been seeing that we've brought you this year has reflected that because I think we've had one of our best years ever. And it is now time for the top 10. And the interesting thing about that is the fact that it was so unbelievably difficult to narrow it down to top 10. There were probably an easy 30 boats where I said, that's got to be in the top 10. And of course, I had to whittle it down. So there's going to be some uh, special shout out mentions for a few of the boats that I really wanted to get in there. There's the Silent 55 solar powered catamaran, super efficient. There's the Dale Classic 37, absolutely gorgeous. There's the Prestige M48, a real departure of Prestige, very brave boat. Gonna be fascinating to see how that does. Uh, Saxdor, uh, 270, brilliant first boat, really like that. The Botnia Targa 46, they brought out a three cabin layout. That's really good. Hans Tiger X1, <laughs> that was just bonkers. Such an amazing boat and being one of the most popular boats on the channel. If we were just going by view count, that would be in at number one for sure. Uh, what else? Uh, Squadron 68, exquisite. The Marex 330, really super practical, nicely put together, lovely bit of kit. Princess S78, just because I really, really like them. The Riviera 78 motor yacht, a really intriguing triple deck sub 80 footer and a really nicely put together boat. The SeaTag Sunseeker 75, that was a boat done by SeaTag down in Plymouth, uh, refurbished to a very high standard. That was a very, very impressive thing uh, to be on board. The Hoosman 65 Custom out in Palma was just a gorgeous, lovely gentleman's cruiser. Galleon 510 Skydeck, if only for its ability to completely enclose the flybridge with a push of a button. Plenty more to like as well, but that was brilliant. Dutchy Sport, absolutely gorgeous. Sun Reef 80, absolutely massive. Sem Bart 75, very adventurous design, very interesting boat. All of those really deserved a spot. They certainly deserved a mention, but they didn't make the top 10. So what did? Well, here we go then. In at number 10 is the Aquila 70 Catamaran. And it's not an Aquila, it's an Aquila. I always pronounce it wrong. I'm sure that's right, Aquila. <laughs> I get told off. Anyway, what a boat that was. I mean, the power catamarans are really getting some traction. Hence, of course, the Prestige M48 that I mentioned earlier, which is the first catamaran from a major monoho builder. But that Aquila 70 that i think that's the biggest boat they've done i'm sure it's the biggest boat they've done and it is incredible what they've got into that what's great about it there's lots that are great about it the sheer space of course is one thing but the way they've used it the fact that the cabins on catamarans they often feel very pinched because they're inside the hulls but on that they just feel like really big full-size cabins lovely big deck saloon area got an upper deck on that one as well it's just a massive massive chunk of really brilliant boat the dining area is up ahead and then this is a really lovely big galley area and what's great is a lot of these are um, owner operated of course you can have a crew and there is a, a crew space which I will show you but um, just for a family on their own the ability to have all this as one big living space you've got your little bar area here you can cook here chat to people here or here it's just really really social works very well indeed what we've got down here then is a massive owner's cabin right up here in the bow. Look at this. That's a great size, isn't it? This is one of the guest cabins. This one has got a, uh, well, it's three cabins actually inside the boat, plus another large cabin that's accessed from outside. 
So four cabins in total, you can have a five cabin layout, and I'll explain that as we go on around, but all these cabins are a great size because these hulls are quite wide. Quite often with catamarans, you come down into these hulls and they're narrow and the beds are sort of squashed in and up against the wall and everything else proper walk around bed in here it's really lovely in at number nine the spirit 65 dh now i got a call from berthon up in lewinton and said we've got this boat listed would you like to come and make a film of it and i had a look online <laughs> and i saw what it was and i said absolutely i'm on my way it's unbelievable it's a, a wooden custom built boat um, and it is perhaps perhaps the most beautiful boat i've ever seen i think it's, it's fair to say it's just exquisite um, and the amount of detail and the amount of care that's gone into the build of that is phenomenal uh, electric powered engines on that one an incredible beautiful cozy interior just an exquisite work of art buying a boat like this is like buying a morgan or a classic aston martin it's designed for style and it's designed for performance. But having said all of that, it is nonetheless 65 foot long, and so therefore the accommodation you do get is pretty special. But it's the look and it's the feel, I think, that really stands out. I mean, this is just cozy, isn't it? You've got your Chesterfield armchairs over here. You've got a lovely little seating area, tuck yourself way down here. You've got sort of the bar area around the galley. It's everything, every inch of this is fabulous. I mean, you just, feast yourself on this interior number eight the cranchy 67 a brand new model saw that down in Cannes. i had it all organized to go and see it it was one of the last boats i filmed in fact my voice is pretty much gone in that video you might remember it and i went on that uh, always expecting quite good things from cranchy they they cranky not cranchy another one i mispronounce um always expect good things from them italian builder always put a lot of design in but that boat just managed to incorporate so much and it did it so beautifully. The design on the inside of that, it really felt like a mini super yacht scaled right down to 67 feet. It was a lovely, lovely thing. Very impressed with that boat. There's a really comfortable seating area just around here. It's very Italian with the contrasting colors and the style, it really does look great. This over here, of course, is a retracting television. And you've also got things like the AV equipment. You can see the Bose system in there tucked away. And you've also got a really nice dining table in here as well. So you can sit, obviously, all the way around that. <laughs> Stating the obvious, isn't it? Sit all the way around that. Excellent. We're full of insight here on Alcoholic. Come and see the owner's cabin, though, because this is palatial. This is, if you had the full cabin layout, you'd lose a bit of this to the fourth cabin. If you don't have the fourth cabin layout, you, or the four cabin layout, I should say, you get the three cabin layout, well, then you get this. <laughs> Look at that. That is just vast. You know, we're on a sub 70 foot boat and yet that is just massive if you come into here it's like a proper little i don't know desk area office area dressing area whatever you want to call it you've got some nice little areas to tuck things away like this dotted around the place love these here for example they just slide out there's little lips on there so that when you're going along they don't obviously slide out and then over here even things like this all beautifully illuminated that is a very nice space and as we carry on back big storage area there and then a lovely owner's cabin here look at this just magnificent i love these little chairs over here they're fabulous you've got the tv flush mounted some very funky lighting love this and then of course the big hull windows the um, rectangular silver section is an opening section for ventilation and over here walk-in wardrobe how nice is that? In Southampton, I was given a really good tour of the Oyster 595. That's a very, very intelligently configured boat. It's big enough that it can go pretty much worldwide, but it is small enough that a experienced family or friends could handle that, even a couple actually, um, without needing crew. And so that sits really nicely for people who want to be able to do some serious exploring, really go worldwide but don't want a boat so big that they need a crew to handle it i mean obviously you would probably take a crew if you're going transatlantic just for the extra watch keeping but in terms of handling the boat you don't need it um, a lot of detail gone into that boat in fact the 495 was another one i looked at and that could easily have made the cut i really ummed and ah between the 595 and the 495 
very similar reasons. Uh, very, very intelligent and very lovely boat. The quality shines through, the looks, the feel, everything about that boat is great. These are drop sections in the rails, so you can see how these sort of hinge up. <laughs> that noise you can hear is the fenders chattering to each other, I think. So we'll step on here, we'll take a turn around the decks first of all, because there's lots to see out here. A lot of thought gone into this particular boat. If we come back here, you've got these lovely seats on the, uh, on the aft quarters, but what you've got here is this one here, you can see it's got an opening section, that's because there is a passerelle that will extend out for stern two berthing. And if we come around here, you can see that bathing platform. So this is the one that hinges up flush against the back of the boat. Check this out. Now this owner has gone for the Warnet finish. They do lighter finishes as well. But what they've done with this, which I think is really nice, is although the wood is fairly dark, there's a lot of very pale panels around here, around the ceiling, the uh, upholstered panels on the bulkheads there. It just lightens it all up, gives a lot of contrast. Looks absolutely fantastic. Another option on this one, it's got the high-low table, so you can drop that down, put infill cushions on there, and make it into like a day bed. And then there's a TV that rises up over here. I think what we'll do is we'll head forward first of all and then we'll work our way back. So what I mean about it being a deck saloon, you've got these big windows all the way around so you get a load of light into here. You don't feel that you're sunk quite as deeply into the boat as you often are with sailing boats. The other thing to mention actually while we're in this area is underneath the floor is tanks so they're kept low, keep the weight in the centre of the boat. There is a tonne of fresh water, there's 1.3 tonnes of diesel if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that's right. But yeah, uh, there's a water maker as well of course, so you, you can create your own fresh water as you go. Keel stepped mast, so the mast runs right down through the boat to the keel. And if we come right up to the front, we will find the VIP guest cabin. Number six, the Galleon 500. Now, Galleon, just every time you go on a Galleon. In fact, I have a bit of a thing with Galleon in that um, I almost always forget something when I film them because there's so much going on. There's so much innovation. And I think what Galleon do, apart from making a really impressive boat, they're actually out there raising the bar for the industry generally because other manufacturers, I think, are having to look to Galleon and thinking, well, hang on, we need to start competing with this and starting to bring in a lot of innovation of their own. But Galleon is still out there in front. They really are in terms of clever stuff, sliding bits, opening bits, multi-use areas. They're just amazing. So you might have noticed that this area here is completely open. It's like a bar area and we've got drop balconies on either side. We'll come to that when we do the tour of the outside once we've done the interior. But I'm going to show you how this works because it's a similar arrangement on this side. You've got these windows here. There are blinds that cover these at night. And what you can do with these is just flick that catch. And although it's a big heavy unit, it just slides really easily. Look at that, one finger. And that clips open like that. And now we've got this entire area here completely open. And we can do more still because you see this seat here. What we can do with this is just move these cushions out of the way. The backrest then flips back. We drop that little piece there over, like so. That drops over, and now we've got a fantastic area. You're in the shelter of the cabin, but you're sat there looking out over the water. That's absolutely brilliant. We can push this button here, and that brings out the TV. That's a 40-inch TV. Thusly. And on the other side then we've got this dining area, but this table is height adjustable. So there's another button for that one. Now you can see that dropping down there. The reason for that is a couple of things. It means that you can drop that down. There's an infill cushion to go on it, and that's a great place to relax and watch TV, which is linked up incidentally to the fusion system. So you have a nice, decent sound to go with that as well. But also it gives you overflow sleeping because although there are three cabins, so you can sleep six, with that drop down, another two people on there, takes you sleeping up to eight. Another thing that you can do with this helm is this seat here swivels across and that means that when you're in port, of course the helm normally takes up quite a big area, but with that, that adds to your seating and just gives you an absolute ton of space to relax and socialise. That's fantastic. In at number five is the Nordhaven 68 NFB. NFB stands for non-flybridge. This particular Nordhaven was built for very experienced owners who really knew exactly what they wanted, including not having a flybridge because where they were using the boat up in the northern latitudes just didn't want or need it. So it was great to go round a boat that had got that level of detail 
and care put into the build and the design of the build by the owners. And they come up with something really special and above all, classic Nordhaven. We're gonna work our way around, of course, the entire vessel. So we'll step in through here. Now this is what I mean about how much space you get by losing the side deck on this side, because of course, normally if you had the side deck here, this whole wall or bulkhead or call it what you will would move in to about here and shrink this area. But with that out to the edge, well, you've just got acres and acres of space. So this is where you control the boat from. Really lovely big area. And this is where you start to get an impression of just how serious this machine is. It really is, and I've used this phrase before, but it applies to this probably more than anything else. It is proper little ship stuff. From the vertical wheel to the professional radar, to all of these displays across here, it's what you'd expect to find on a commercial machine. And this is designed for serious, serious seagoing. I mean, across the Atlantic stuff, forget across the channel. You can go to America on this. Here we go. Now this is key to this boat and to these boats generally. The fact that you've got a big, heavy duty, low revving, unstressed central main engine. And the whole point of these is the fact that if you run a boat at displacement speeds, so a hull will have a, a natural maximum speed that it'll reach very easily. And then after that, you've got to shovel a whole load of power in. But if you keep your speed down, then you get tremendous, tremendous range. And on this boat, this particular engine, it is a 400 horsepower engine. And it'll give the boat just over 10 knots. But in actual fact, what you do with it is you cruise it at eight, keep it within its displacement speed. And then it's using, I think I was told something like 25 liters an hour. It really zips the fuel. And that's what gives you a three and a half thousand mile range. It's absolutely epic. So that is really the most economical way to run a boat, just a big, heavy duty single diesel engine. That's continuously rated. You could run at a 400 horsepower at maximum revs, which is 1900 RPM, and it'll run like that continuously, but you never would, because of course it's quite a thirsty way to run it. So you drop the revs back, drop it up to about 1200, it's about eight knots, and away you go. Now, of course, the only problem with a single engine is the situation of backup. If that engine were to stop for any reason, then uh, you know, you've got a problem. Well, that's why they fit a wing engine. So over here, there is a completely, completely separate engine. So separate engine, separate controls, separate fuel tanks, separate electrics, starting, all of that. That is a John Deere 135 horsepower engine. It's not as fast with that engine, but it'll still do sort of five to six knots, and that's you get your home. So if all else fails, if you had a problem with the main engine, you couldn't put it right, that is how you would sort yourself out and get yourself home. In at number four, can you hear that wind? It's absolutely howling out there. In at number four is the Pearl 72. Out at Fort Lauderdale, that boat was launched. I was one of the first people to get on board of it and film it. I think we had the first video of the Pearl 72 on the internet, which was great. And it was a super impressive boat. It's one of those boats where you really do wonder how they get it all in. It's four cabin layout, all en suite. You've got two cabins which are of owner cabin standard. There's a garage in it. There's a really great flybridge on it. There's a fantastic four deck area. Everything about that boat was very clever, very neatly done. It was just a really, really impressive package. And another one of those builders that's perhaps not quite so mainstream, but nonetheless is really raising the bar for everybody. It's an amazing boat. Well, firstly, it's incredibly rare to find a 70 foot flybridge boat with a garage. Um, and this will actually take a Williams 345 tender in here, so it's take a decent size. What you don't expect then is to be able to put a jet ski in here as well. That is absolutely remarkable. Now what you do with these is the, uh, the bathing platform lowers, and then of course you can slide these down into the water. Now, technically I suppose you could put something on the platform as well, another jet ski if you wanted to, but the whole idea of course is to put this whole all the toys away really so you know jet ski tender but also things like the sea bob as well uh, can live in here where we can go from here is back this is what i mean about it having two owner's cabins because that is what you'd normally expect to find on a boat of this size as an owner's cabin and yet you've got this one and you've got that one that we saw up in the bow and that's brilliant for charters so if you've got two couples chartering a boat for example if you've got uh, co-owners uh, also, for families, imagine if you've got um, 
adults with kids and then grandparents have come along, they can have their own separate full-sized accommodation up at the front of the boat and then this for the sort of the adults and the kids down in this level. It works really well, it's very clever. There's TV built in behind that mirror so it shines through the mirror. You've got a lovely dressing area over on this side. But yeah, that works well, doesn't it? Number three, the Princess F65. Now this is not a game changer. This is just Princess doing what they do so very, very well. And that is build a brilliant, brilliant flybridge boat. Very discreet, nothing flamboyant or flash about it. Just a really well put together, nicely designed, intelligently configured and laid out flybridge motorboat. And it's always a joy to really get behind the scenes on a princess, look in the engine room, look in the engineering spaces, see the way that everything is put together. They are, really are a cut above. They're not a cheap boat, but there's a reason for that. And when you really get on board and really get behind the scenes, you can see it. But you don't have to go behind the scenes of that boat just looking around the accommodation and the deck spaces and everything else. You really do get a sense of princess being at the very top of their game. And I really love this seating area around here. It's nice and deep and comfortable because of course you don't need to dine here. You've got this separate dining area down here. This is all about relaxing and lounging. There's a big TV that powers up out of here. And then the other thing you've got up here is the bar area. So this is giving you things like ice maker, the cocktail fridge, and then this is for your glasses and that kind of stuff in here. AV equipment lives down there as well. And that sense of quality with this diamond stitching that they put through, really very nice indeed. Side door on this one, it's got everything on this really, hasn't it? And then as we come across here, you've got of course your uh, engine controls, the steering, this is a nice detail. When you turn the steering, <laughs> look at this, it's weighted. So that your princess badge is always the right way up. Fantastic. Uh, what else we've got? Bow and stern thruster on this one. You've got the twin screens, so you can select these for whatever you want, chart plotter or engine instrumentation, although there is a separate engine screen here. And you've got the vents here as well for the air conditioning. And then over here, really nice little seat, just raised up slightly, so that's very nice when the boat's underway. But the other thing they've done with this, which is quite clever, is they've put this in here. And it's like a little laptop table. So if you want to sit there, pop your laptop on there, do a little bit of work, whatever else, that's fantastic. There's a drop window there as well for a bit of ventilation. Of course, there is air conditioning, but it's nice to just get some air through sometimes. So if you have that window down and that door open, you get a good through flow of air. Number two. We're going to blow away in a minute. Number two. And uh, this was a bit of a tussle really as to whether this would get number two or the princess at number three would because these were side by side. But I ended up putting this one at number two just because I liked the boat so very, very much. Forget the style, forget the, the engineering, forget all that. Just, I just liked the way it was done. It was a boat that kind of spoke to me. It was a boat that I could really see myself on. <laughs> if any billionaires are listening, you know what I want for Christmas? Yeah, it was a nice piece of kit and it is the Fairline Phantom 65. Now what they did with this is they have uh, jumped onto the bandwagon of sports cruisers that have a small flybridge. And now this has been done before, boats like the Sunseeker 65 Sport Yacht, the Princess S66, they're already in that sphere. So they need to come up with something quite special and they did. And I think what sets that uh, Phantom 65 apart is the detailing. It just feels like such a special place to be when you're on board. If you have a look on this side, you've got the very fine Fairline finishes. Now this is the Matt Warner. You can get the high gloss if you prefer, of course, which Fairline are quite famous for, but this does look good. And you're seeing all the typical Fairline attention to detail. Look at this fluted area here, and then they've got this in the light cream up above. This, of course, as you probably gather for yourself, is a really big fridge, and there's a freezer then down underneath, like so. You've also got, oh, let's try it again. <laughs> there we go. You've also got your all electric cooking. It's a ceramic hob, of course. This is cutlery in places like this. What else have we got here? Dishwasher lives down underneath, like so. I've not shut that one properly. There we are. And then sink round over here, more storage down in places like this, or in actual fact, bins, to be precise. And then that opens up 
like so. Again, that fell on detailing. Look at the way the grain runs through here. Look at these little rubber sections on here. Make sure it doesn't rattle. And in fact, you can see as well, they've put this sort of maple finish. We'll see that actually further down the boat. I'll show that to you in a bit more detail. But um, yeah, it's very fair line, isn't it? Now, when you press this, you have to keep your finger down on it because there's an air seal. You'll see it deflating around the edges. I don't know how you can see that. And what that does is obviously make sure it's totally airtight and watertight. But then once it has deflated, that powers back. There we go. And now you've got a really big opening up above the helm. That's really great because you can be down here, sheltered, but have the open roof up above you. And this is a fast boat. We'll come to performance when we go down the engine room. It is properly quick, this one. So that's a nice feature. You don't have to be up on the flywheel being blasted. You can be in here, get the fresh air, but have this great protection from the screen. This is the bit that makes this a sports flybridge because we've got the steps up here and we've got this up here. Now the flybridges on these boats are always much smaller than they are on the traditional flybridge boats, but having said that, this one's a really good size. Look at this. I mean, obviously it's not as big as the Squadron 68. If you want full-on flybridge, that's the boat you buy. But a surprising amount of space, considering how sports orientated this is, and that sliding roof that we saw at the front. We've got the track vision domes here, we've got the radar on the top, horns, nav lights, searchlight, all that kind of stuff. Bimini on here for a bit of shade, and then seating all the way around here. Another of these folding tables, so this drops open like so. And then over here is the bar area. So you've got the barbecue, you've got the sink, and again, that fluting that matches the woodwork that we saw inside gives us access to the ice maker and the fridge. And of course, the upper helm is here. So you've got these two lovely pedestal mounted seats. Just correct my OCD, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, the Garmin screens, twin screens here and a further screen there. And then you've got your, your throttle controls. Um, these are your uh, trim tab controls. I love the way it's done these switches down here. Bim up and bim down is the bimini. It's actually a powered bimini, so that makes it easy to erect and fold away. And then you've got uh, autopilot just there. Very nice helm position. What's also great is you've got this area next to the helm. I mentioned it was very much an owner-operator boat. If you're cruising down the coast, this is brilliant because you're sat here and you can have all your family or friends with you, all enjoying the ride, all enjoying this brilliant view from up here. And you can see that sliding roof. Now, before we get to number one, it's important to say there is nothing really objective about this list. This is a list of what I really liked and what really spoke to me over the last 12 months. And the one that really stands out as the thing that I think all of us enjoyed so very much was the Sunseeker Superhawk build red. My friend Richard has been creating this dream of his, this vision for about 18 months. And this year we saw it really come together. We saw it launch and we went out and we sea trialed it. And it just totally lived up to expectation. I mean, when I saw him start on that build, I thought it was ambitious, and it was ambitious. I mean, he took that boat absolutely down to bare bones. There was only a hull and a deck left, and then completely recreated it in his own vision. And it's just, it's just a testament to what one man can do. It's, it's mind-blowing to have seen and to have experienced. And what's really great about it is after all that work and all that effort, what he's created really is truly special.
And that is it. That is the top 10. As I mentioned, it's not a particularly objective list. It's a list of what I liked, what spoke to me, but also what spoke to you guys, the ones that got the most comments, the ones that got the most interest. Those are the boats that made it onto the top 10. But I'd be very interested to hear what you think of that list. I'd be interested to hear what you think I've missed out, what I should have added, what should have been in number one if red shouldn't have been, and what you think generally, because ultimately this channel is all about you guys. Without you watching and enjoying and commenting and liking and just getting involved, well, then there would be nothing. And it has just been brilliant to bring all this stuff to you. It's been absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to wish you guys a very, very happy Christmas. I look forward to what we can bring for you all next year. And I wish you all a brilliant 2023. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.